And we just want to welcome you to the 2024 North Dakota, South Dakota Affiliate Award Ceremony. Jill and I are so excited to be hosting again this year and to celebrate the many things that you young adults have accomplished. NCWIT Aspirations in Computing changes what's possible for women in technology from K-12 through career by offering the kind of encouragement that combats isolation, enables long-term persistence, opens doors, and changes lives. AIC uses program elements that spark interest in computing, recognizes and celebrates students' technical aspirations and abilities, as well as the educators who support them and provide an expansive supportive network through the AIC community. My name is Jill Baird, and I am one of your hosts for today and have been a member of this committee for five years. And I am Charity Nix. This is our third year hosting Jill and I, the ceremony, and the fourth year that I've been a part of the committee. And we have seen some of you seniors since you started applying as freshmen, and it's been impressive to see how far you have grown and improved your skill set throughout the years. The third member of our committee is Tabitha Teal, and you will see her in the call today, bringing lots of excitement to this event. So it is March Madness with winter sports coming to an end. We have been watching final games for basketball, hockey, and curling like crazy for the past few weeks. You know, that's cool, Jill. And I love sports, and I'm sure most of you do too. And you know that I can talk sports for weeks, but we are not here today to talk about sports. We have other things that we need to share with you all. Very true. And continuing with that idea, I wanted to bring that theme to today's award ceremony by celebrating a Sweet 16 technology version of the March Madness Brackets. I looked at all of the activities our awardees have participated in or have the opportunity to participate in and tools that can be used in the classroom and set up our own March Madness. I love that idea, the March Madness of computer science and technology. Show me what you are thinking about. And are we starting with like Selection Sunday, which was the day that all applications were submitted? Um, when we look at the applications of our award winners, we see a wide variety of experience and tools that they've used in their computing journeys. Yeah, you, you could definitely say that, but let me explain. As we go through the ceremony today, we are going to look at some of the events, tools, and opportunities that our awardees have used and taken part in. We may not get to look at all of the opportunities and events as we don't have the time to start with the top 68, as you do in basketball, but we're going to have fun with this. As the award ceremony progresses, we will narrow down the top events or tools from students. By the end, we will have a champion for our first ever Technology March Madness. Oh, this is gonna be fun. And I agree that we can start with the top 68 because we wanna make sure that we can get through everything. So let's take a look at our agenda to see how this tournament will play out as we celebrate our awardees. So we are gonna hear from our North Dakota Superintendent of Education, Kirsten Baszler. We have a great keynote featured speaker for you today, as well as highlighting and announcing all of our awardee winners today. So with that, let's get started. First of all, we have a message from our North Dakota Superintendent of Public Instruction. Kirsten Baszler was not able to join us live today, but she did send a message for us to share with everyone. So let's take a look. Good afternoon. My name is Kirsten Baszler and I am the North Dakota State School Superintendent. I am humbled and honored to be asked to speak to you. Congratulations to the young people who are being honored today by the National Center for Women and Information Technology. In North Dakota, our governor and I are strong supporters of young girls and women who want to explore computer science, cybersecurity, and technology. Girls Go Cyber Start is a big deal. Our schools participate in Hour of Code and the number is rising. We're working to grow our number of technology teachers and computer science and technology courses. We have approved a new computer science and cybersecurity teaching credential in North Dakota. We have computer science and cybersecurity learning standards in grades kindergarten through grade 12. In the last North Dakota legislative session, our lawmakers approved a bill I have been working on for years. 
It requires the teaching of computer science and cybersecurity and the integration of our content standards into school coursework from kindergarten through 12th grade in all grades. We were the first state in the nation to approve legislation requiring cybersecurity education. Information technology is foundational knowledge in education today. A large majority of parents want their children to learn computer science and cybersecurity. Students need to understand how the internet works. They need to know how to use and test an algorithm and how to create a computer app. They need to know how to develop computational thinking, which can be applied to any situation. We want our students to be good digital citizens. They must be more aware of potential cyber threats and how to combat them, and they need to be prepared to safeguard their digital identity. I care deeply about this. I have two young granddaughters. When they start school, I want them to have the broadest array of educational options, and those have to include information technology. I want them to be the best prepared digital citizens than they can be. I am so happy to see the great diversity of the Women in Information and Technology Award winners. I believe our message of encouraging more young girls and women to get into technology is getting through. The number of girls and young women who are interested in technology fields is growing. Students are getting interested in these skills in elementary school. This is what needs to happen in our modern society and this is absolutely fantastic that we are a part of it. I am proud of you, award winner, beyond words. I'm sure it's been difficult for many of you. You may not have many friends or peers who share your interests. You may not have had as many computer science class offerings as you would have liked. But things are getting better. The young girls and women who will come after you will have more resources. They will have more like-minded students among their peers. And we will narrow the gender gap in technology fields. It is important for all of you to help bring this about. I encourage you to be mentors and guides to the young girls and women who are coming up after you. You are role models for the students who will follow you. You may not think of yourselves yet as a role model, but you are. If you know someone who shares your interest in technology, encourage them and give them advice if they ask for it. I am a former classroom teacher and I know that some of a student's most effective teachers are his or her peers and friends. You can relate to your fellow students in ways that adults cannot. You can ad also advance the cause by speaking to your adult policymakers, your school board members, your state legislators. Let them know that technology instruction is important to you and important to all of us. It is important that adult policymakers hear this message from students themselves. Get into the fight for your future. I think you will find it exhilarating and fun. And most adult policymakers want to hear from young people just like you. To close, I want to say again, congratulations to the award winners and thank you to the National Center for Women and Information Technology for its important work. Hey, and we would like to thank Superintendent Basler for her motivating and insightful message. Okay, well, ooh, we have our first round of elimination. Hey, we've had some great competition in our brackets thus far. We've even had an unexpected upset, which is what we expect to see in March Madness. Our awardees take part in some amazing opportunities and have grown in their skill sets because of them. Let's look at the first round of results. So we have Girls Who Code who edged out programming and will be taking on Code.org who eliminated Code Ninjas. Gen Cyber eliminated, eliminated Cyber Patriot and will be taking on Make Code who removed Cyber Start America in the first round. NC Wit eliminated Genius Hour and will be taking on Lego League, which also eliminated the National Cyber Cup from Cyber.org. Robotics took on Microbit to win and will face down Cyber Madness, who beat Cyber in the first round.
That is great, Jill. And we do have a special national champion with us today as well as our featured speaker. Have we seen her connect with us as of yet? I have not seen our, our speaker join us quite yet. Um, That's okay. What we can do is we can ad lib and we will continue on with celebrating our award winners. And then when Dr. Bardois joins us, we can actually, you know, introduce her at that point in time. Okay, that works for me. Sounds good. Okay. Um. Well, we're, we're just gonna keep going with the with the <laughs> brackets then. <laughs> Might as well. Might as well. And we have our bracket update again. So we are down to the final four. Hey, oh, we have she. just joined us. Just in time. You know, when you're getting these national champions, it's tough to make sure that their schedules match up with ours. All right. So as we were saying, we do have a national champion with us today as our featured speaker. We're so excited to have her join us. Her story is unique, and I'm excited for her to share how she was able to come out on top. Dr. Ruchi Joji Bardwaj is a wife, mother, and caregiver of a diverse menagerie consisting of 10, yes, 10, beloved pets. Her journey began 15 years ago when she made the decision to leave her hometown of New Delhi, India, and embark on a path of academic pursuit in Fargo, North Dakota. She earned a bachelor's degree in biotechnology from NDSU. Her academic journey continued with vigor and has transitioned into a master's program, which secured a graduate school assistantship focused on collaborating with tribal communities through the nature program. But she didn't stop there. She then pursued a PhD in civil and environmental engineering at the department of NDSU as well. Following the completion of her dissertation, she further broadened her professional horizons through an internship as a grant writer with Emerging Prairie, which is Grand Farm's parent company. This experience culminated in a full-time role with Grand Farm. I could go on, but I think the story is better coming directly from the source. So let's welcome Dr. Rushi Joji Bardwaj. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can hear you fine. Oh, perfect. <laughs> technology. We're talking here about technology, but we always need the human element to ensure that it's working properly. Good, uh, a very good afternoon to all the esteemed guests, and I want to express my um, gratitude uh, to Jill, Charity, Tabitha Steele uh, for giving me this opportunity and this platform, um, allowing me to, to connect with all of you. And it's an honor, and I thank all of you for your time uh, and your attention. Uh, I was asked to talk a little bit about my background, which Charity has done a fabulous job. I will just fill in some of the gaps here because um, it'll give you a bit more perspective about how interdisciplinary my background has been and how it wasn't really technology driven to begin with. But at this point in time, I am um, very much surrounded with and you know my life is so embedded with technology and that's important to talk about because i feel you all are in the same position um sometimes we don't even realize how much technology is driving our life like the day-to-day -day things that we do and we can literally make a career out of it so uh diving a little bit into my background it was it has always been very stem focused uh, research based and doing several projects, uh, consulting projects and, you know, just uh, a co curricular projects, if I may say so. Um, I got my undergrad in biotechnology, as you heard about. Uh, during my undergrad, I was working in three different kind of labs. I was working in animal science lab where I was literally working with lamb intestinal tissues. I was working in agriculture and biosystems lab where I was literally working with cattle poop. <laughs> um, and then I was working in environmental engineering lab where I was working with drinking and wastewater. Simultaneously, my passion was into theater. Uh, so I was always, you know, doing a little bit of stuff on campus. During my master's, my research area was all around a parasite called Cryptosporidium. 
um, which did not really excite me much. But what excited me more was learning the fact that graduate school was majorly paid because my tuition was all waived. Uh, and it also paid you, you know, if you were working on a research project or some graduate assistantship program. So for me, that was working with the tribal communities. As Charity mentioned, there is a program called uh, Nature, which is an abbreviated form for nurturing American tribal undergraduate research and education. So that allowed me to travel to all the five reservations within North Dakota. And, you know, it was the objective was to encourage and expose the students to careers in STEM. And honestly speaking, I loved it. I did not know much about reservations. It was an adventure. It was so much new learning for myself. And um, I used to assist professors, different faculty members, you know, from different parts of science, engineering, mathematics departments. And I got exposed to a lot of different kind of tools and technologies these professors were using. So at that time, my focus wasn't really on technology side of things, but you know, sometimes it's the indirect experiences that you gain exposure to that teaches you and skills you, you know, gives you those skills, which you would not believe, but in my current role, I am using them actively, which I'll talk about more. Uh, so I was in graduate school. I was still enjoying the fact that, you know, um, graduate school is not uh, so much uh, student loan focused. Uh, you know, I was relaxed. I didn't really have to pay, but I was rather earning. So it made me feel a bit more independent. During my PhD program, my research area was wastewater treatment. And I was working as a licensed water treatment plant operator. That was my day job. So 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. I was in Moorhead, Minnesota. I was treating water. So we're talking about 10 million gallons of water every day. So imagine four big football grounds <laughs> that are full of water. Besides that, I was uh, also doing a lot of R&D research and development projects because um, with the old infrastructure or like, you know, um, with any organization, you have to, if you have to survive, you have to keep evolving. You have to keep up with the new technologies, with what's new going on to ensure that the quality of your work stays good. So trying to make an analogy with the water treatment plant, we want to ensure that we are using the best and the newest technologies to ensure that, you know, there are no contaminants in the water because water is something that you can never um, avoid in life, right? Uh, so I was climbing all the water towers because that was a part of uh, one of the projects, uh, taking samples from different heights of the different uh, water towers. So I'm talking about this stuff to give you an example, to give you a perspective that this is my experience where I'm coming from, which did not have much around, uh, you know, realizing the fact that I will be working with so much technology. So working at the treatment plant, I got exposure to this thing called SCADA, S-C-A-D-A. -A, and it is basically a tool that the operators use to monitor the entire plant, entire treatment plant. So sitting in your chair, you can see how are the chemicals working? What's happening? What is the pH? You know, the different parameters that you use to analyze and monitor the water quality, which is super important because if something messes up even slightly, the entire city will be facing the damages. So you see the, um, the criticalness um, of technology that is, you know, it's super helpful, but that does not mean that we can 100% rely on technology. You have to be constantly on your feet, ensuring that the numbers that you see on your screen match with the uh, with the analyzers that are literally doing the work. So, you know, you it gave me that perspective that, you know, technology is amazing. It is super helpful, but the human element is always going to be there, which is all of you here, you know, all of us. Uh, so as a part of my graduate school life, um, I published several uh, journal articles uh, through my work uh, on my research work at NDSU and also the work that I was doing at the treatment plan. And throughout my school life, I was involved in different student chapters as a as an executive officer, you know, because the more you get involved in different clubs that interest you and there are sometimes 
clubs that might not interest you, but they're going to build you technically. So that is very important. I wanted to ensure that I have a solid foundation, a solid background in the field that I am in, which was water and wastewater treatment. Uh, so whatever you can do to, you know, uh, get that exposure and why I'm stressing on the fact that you should uh, involve in different organizations. I mean, the fact that you are a part of NCWIT speaks volumes about you, uh, but I want you to stay motivated and keep continuing with your involvement and engagement in different clubs because through these clubs, you can travel to different places. So for me, I was traveling annually to Chicago and New Orleans because that's where our biggest conferences were happening. And when you are a part of a club, there are sponsors who help you out, right? So, so make sure that you stay engaged in different um, extracurricular activities. Uh, the next thing that I'd like to move into is uh, moving to Grand Farm. How did that transition happen? So, you know, um, towards the fifth year of my doctoral studies, it was time for me to focus on my dissertation slash thesis. You know, that required a lot of focus and energy, which I usually, you know, would lose at the end of my job at the treatment plant. So, you know, I was exploring different opportunities that were less physical and allowed me more um, flexibility and gave me more time to focus on my writing. So, Thanks to technology, hashtag LinkedIn, it allowed me to reach out to the CEO of my current organization, Greg TV, who at that time um, was, you know, having conversations with the Fargo Moorhead Diversion Project. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it was all related to water, Red River, uh, you know, um, moving the Red River water into different areas so that we don't have uh, this flood every year and how we can avoid situations of drought in our community, in our region. And so they wanted to hire some uh, grant writers. So they hired a PhD student who was bringing in the STEM expertise into the organization. So I came into Grand Farm as a grant writer. Now, Emerging Prairie is like a parent company, uh, just how Alphabet is to Google. So Emerging Prairie has three different organizations underneath Grand Farm is one. Uh, then you have Emerging Digital Academy that teaches uh, how to code, become a full stack developer. And then we have an entrepreneurship arm. So if you're ever interested in starting something of your own, you know, we've got resources in the community that you can always reach out to. And I'm always here. If you need any connections, I would love to, you know, get you connected with the right people. Um, so going back, so they hired me and I was writing grants and one of the things that I still remember my advisor told me, you know, when I had started as a graduate student was I used to be like, you know, so fascinated, like, oh, my gosh, you have a PhD, your life is all sorted. And, you know, um, just being a fan girl of uh, PhDs He's like, you know what, Ruchi, it uh, the biggest thing that you get out of um, being a PhD student is you become a good writer, you know, and. He didn't say that, you know, you become a good writer in one specific industry, but once you're a writer, you can get into any industry. It's the same as you guys knowing if you understand coding, if you understand the, the language of technology, you can essentially work in any industry. You are not confined to just agriculture, healthcare, finance, gaming, fashion. The opportunities and doors are open for you. It's all about you putting your mind into what industry you want to get into. So that has always stayed with me. And when I got this job, I really felt it because I was like, well, they don't do anything related to water, wastewater. But, you know, because there was this skill that they wanted, so they hired me. So that's how I got into Grand Farm. Um, I started as a project coordinator. Then I you know, got promoted as a grants and education coordinator when they hired me full time after I graduated. Uh, then I worked as a grower and education program manager. So I was working with our entire ecosystem and I'll talk about like what an ecosystem means for Grand Farm or Emerging Prairie. And right now I work as a senior program manager for education and research. And I serve on multiple ag advisory boards um, within Fargo Moorhead area. So what do I do at Grand Farm? So before talking about my role, 
Uh, I'll kind of briefly introduce what Grand Farm is. It's a nonprofit organization that's located in Fargo, North Dakota. We are located in Fargo, but we work with partners globally. So we're oftentimes working, talking with folks from Japan, Brazil, Australia, Canada, and several other countries. Uh, because, uh, you know, similar to water, agriculture is an intricate part of our society. And so if we need food, we're all a part, we're, we all are a part of ag. <laughs> I think that's how I like to see things. So Grand Farm is a collaborative network uh, of growers. When I say growers, it means farmers and ranchers and everybody in the ag community, basically. We work with corporations like Microsoft, Amazon, Google. We work with startups. We work with educators, researchers, government folks, and then investors. And everybody here is working together to solve problems in agriculture through ag technology and innovation. In my role, I connect with everyone in the education industry from like kindergarten through higher ed. And then, you know, everybody in our ecosystem, farmers, ranchers, professionals in the ag tech industry. I write grants for my organization and collaborate with external organizations. I do intentional matchmaking for our educational partners with industry partners to support uh, collaboration. So, you know, if you guys are interested in connecting with some professional, um, I would love to make that connection if, you know, if I know the person or, or I can find someone who can make that connection. Um, I do. Um, I curate and host educational events to fill the identified gaps. Now, what are these gaps? Um, to give you a few examples, there is a shortage of people who are entering into agriculture because oftentimes people think um, that you know you will be on a farm or a ranch working just six months and then not doing anything for the rest of the six months, which is not true because agriculture is a lot of work. You know, you're doing marketing. I mean, on top of the things on your farm or ranch, and it necessarily, it doesn't have to be your farm or your ranch. It can be a different uh, company, like a seed company or a fertilizer company, for example, or a technology company like Bushel, you know, who have digitized all the transactions that a farmer or rancher has to do. Uh, so again, it goes back to technology. So there are gaps like lack of support for ag educators, lack of industry collaboration, and, uh, Last but not the least, the lack of diversity in agriculture that we see, not just in terms of uh, the women participation, but now you will see there are like people of color around you. Um, those demographics have significantly changed in our regions. So, you know, how can we bring everybody together and solve the problems in ag? Um, so we try to provide them resources and skills through our events, through matchmaking, through doing projects at our site in Castleton. So I think um, enough about me. Let's talk about the champions in this room. Um, first of all, I'm so proud of all of you, uh, the future leaders and innovators in this room. That's who you all are. And I want you to take a moment to acknowledge that because it's very uh possible that you might not be able to envision it right away and i could be totally wrong because and i say that because that's how i used to feel but eventually you know as you keep taking the steps towards upskilling and towards your career time is not far away you know when you will see yourself in one of the leadership positions you know it's a it's it's a common misconception that technology careers are reserved for the tech savvy elite but as someone who's gone from biotechnology to water treatment to grant writing, let me assure you that technology knows no bounds. Whether you're passionate about healthcare, finance, education, gaming, nursing, even wrangling a household full of pets, technology has a place for you. So don't be afraid to dream big, to explore new horizons and to embrace the ever evolving world of technology in your chosen field. You must have all heard about artificial intelligence, machine learning. Um, I'm learning about how artificial intelligence is further categorized into uh, normal, uh, narrow intelligence and general intelligence, artificial uh, AIG and AIN, those kind of terms. And I'm like, wow, this is just going to get deeper and deeper. And all that matters is you being aware 
that what's happening now, what is going to be happening tomorrow, you know, uh, when you're all going to be grown up, you're going to probably have some kids or be teaching my kid. Um, what are the tools that you should be aware about? I'm pretty sure Jill and Charity have uh, touched base or some other speakers about, you know, how people who are comfortable using AI are always going to be ahead of the game versus the people who don't want to accept that. Trust me or not, I use artificial intelligence. I'm using ChatGPT when I'm working on my research projects. Now, I want to also emphasize on the fact that AI is not going to give you 100% accurate answers, but it is going to make your life easy. It is going to remove the redundancy of, you know, um, the basic work. You know, it is going to unleash your power to be creative, the things that you want to focus on. So one of the biggest things I would like you to focus on is never stop building on your communication skills. What that means is, don't stop writing or reading. It might sound traditional, it might sound archaic, but through my experience, I have realized that reading and writing is a power that will even make you more powerful when you're using these tools because it gives you ideas to be more creative. And all you have to do is give commands to this chat GPT or any other AI tool that you're using, whether it is for graphic designing or content designing. It is important the kind of commands that you're giving. It is your personal assistant, but it is important that your assistant understands the accuracy and the detail of the stuff that you want to do, you know, with your project. Whether it is a resume building, whether it is you performing in in like theater, which I like, I wish I had chat GPT for back in the day. Unfortunately, we didn't. Perhaps I could add some more humor. Um, but yeah. Put yourself out there. You have already taken the big step by being here, by being a part of NCWIT. Don't be afraid to put your out, put yourself out there. If you see any job, whether it is an internship job, whether it is a full-time job, there are 10 requirements. Even if you match 50% of it, go ahead and apply for it. Don't hold yourself back. My assumption is not a lot of you here have imposter syndrome, or I pray that none of you ever have that. But if you have that, think of this conversation we're having today, that it's just another label that's put on us. And it is something that is very superficial. It is not a real thing. So, you know, like most of the guys, I mean, when I say guys, I see my own husband. He doesn't have a PhD and he acknowledges the fact that, you know, all the people who are upskilling themselves, especially women, they try to hold themselves back just because they're not, they don't see themselves fulfilling all those 10 requirements. And that gave me the confidence that, you know what, even if you match certain requirements, go for it, apply for it. Worst case, they'll say no. At least you participated. Imagine what if you get that dream project or that dream job that you want to work on, even if it is not a dream job, but if it is something that uplifts your profile, your professional profile, go for it. Do not never hold yourself back. I will encourage you to do job shadow. Do not be afraid to reach out to professionals of interest. If it is me, tell me anytime. There are so many people who are passionate to help out uh, young and talented people like yourself. It's just a matter of you reaching out and asking them. So make sure that you feel comfortable in reaching out. I would encourage you to get some certifications. There are so many certification programs that are out there, whether they're online, offline. A lot of them are for free. Some of them might require some minimal fee, but there are so many scholarships that are out there that you can take advantage of. For example, I recently took uh, my exam for remote pilot. So you need to have a license if you want to fly a drone commercially. Um, now that might sound a little weird. You'll be like, what the hell? Why does she need that? <laughs> she doesn't do anything with drones. Well, that is true. I don't directly do anything with drones, but I know that there are so many jobs that are going to be out there and there is so much technology that is embedded into a drone, whether it is the camera that goes on it 
or the the stuff it's called payload that's the word if you are picking up any parcel for example or if you are using in using it in agriculture for spraying pesticides fertilizer or seeds or if you're if you're a firefighter you have to spray water there is a lot of technology behind it and there is a lot of knowledge that needs but it pays you amazing and there are going to be a lot more jobs out there and a lot of these these jobs would require you to travel that means you're getting so much more exposure so i because i connect a lot with educators and students and you know professionals who are trying to upskill or you know pivot into a different career i like to talk about this new stuff so i wanted to educate myself in learning about what exactly is drone license all about. You know how it is when you get your driver's license and it gives you so much of independence and flexibility. That's exactly similar um, to this um, drone pilot license. You can be exploring a lot of different opportunities. So I just wanted to give you an example. Uh, at certain point in life, you feel that, you know what? I'm in a good position. I don't really need to, you know, gain any other um, experiences or certifications or upskilling, but that's not true. The more you upskill, you cannot even imagine how many opportunities and doors open up for you. The ones that we don't even think about. So keep upskilling yourself. It never ends no matter how old you get. And I'm not going to talk about my age. So <laughs> in closing, um, let's remember that life is an adventure you know, an ever changing journey that's filled with surprises, challenges and moments of pure joy and a lot of sorrow as well. But we have to keep moving, you know, let's lean into the chaos, seize these opportunities and make our mark on the world one innovation at a time. I want to thank all of you for your time and attention and a huge congratulations to all the award recipients. Here's to the future of filled with endless possibilities and maybe a few less pets underfoot that I have in my life. Thank you, everybody. I so appreciate you. And I'm open for any questions. <laughs> that is absolutely wonderful, Ruchi. Thank you so much. What a suspenseful, inspiring adventure you have had from water quality to poop to drone yeah. flying. <laughs> You have quite the vast background underneath your belt, and that is absolutely amazing. So thank you so much. And Rushi, would you mind um, if you are willing to put your contact information in our chat for us, for those that may be interested in reaching out to you for maybe an internship or just collaborating and some sharing some ideas? Absolutely. That would be great. Thank you this so much. This is my email, my phone number. This is my text <laughs> uh, cell phone number. Feel free to text me. Um, I would love to help if there's anything I can do. And if there's something that I can do, I'd love to find people, who, you know, who are really passionate about helping everybody on this call today. <laughs> <laughs> That is so wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your story because really it is an inspiration to know that yes, what you worked in, you don't necessarily see technology, but it is all around. And there are so many possibilities in front of these young people that they just may not even be aware of as of right now. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, everyone. So do you know what else I am so excited about right now, Jill? I need to know who is in our final four. Well, it's a good thing we have a bracket update. We are down to the final four. Yay! Okay, so Girls Who Code, they have eliminated code.org, and so they are in the final four. Jen Zyber also took out Make Code, another participant in the final four. NC Wit defeated Lego League, and okay. Robotics has brought down Cyber Madness. Wow, those are some great competitors, and we have four great competitors remaining, but we still have three groups of amazing champions in North and South Dakota that we also have to announce and celebrate. So let's watch this video from NCWIT. Hello. On behalf of NCWIT, the Aspirations in Computing team is honored to congratulate you on your accomplishment as a 2024 high school award recipient. We celebrate you, your current achievements, and the many more to come. 
We believe each of you belongs in tech and NCWIT is here to help you on your journey. NCWIT, the National Center for Women in Information Technology, is the farthest reaching network of change leaders focused on advancing innovation and correcting underrepresentation in computing and includes representatives from nearly 1,600 academic institutions, companies, and nonprofits. NCWIT and its network are here to support you at every step in college and as you enter the workforce. You now have access to NCWIT's abundance of resources and support. As an Aspirations in Computing High School Award recipient, you are now part of a vibrant community of over 30,000 women, gender, queer, and non-binary technologists who will do everything they can to help you succeed in your computing and IT journey. With this network, we foster opportunities for connection, networking, support, and ongoing encouragement. So be on the lookout for how to access all the community has to offer. And once you're in college, you can apply for the NCWIT AIC Collegiate Award, which recognizes your technical contributions to projects that have a high level of potential impact. So remember to apply for this award when you're in college and graduate school. Women, gender, queer, and non-binary folks have played prominent roles in computing since the beginning. Your innovation is needed to move these fields into the future. As an aspiring technologist, you will help shape the solutions for the problems of today and tomorrow, making the world a better place for us all. Many of you are already making the world a better place, not only with your technological innovations, but also with your community outreach efforts. We encourage you to apply to, for the Aspirations in Computing Impact Award opening April 3rd. The AIC Impact Award recognizes AIC community members, that's you, for their incredible efforts to create opportunities and to grow interest in computing. We want to thank everyone who has supported these amazing award recipients in their journey, including family members, educators, mentors, friends, and allies. With your encouragement, support, and remarkable commitment to these students' aspirations, you are encouraging, ensuring that they have the foundation to succeed. Please continue to support them in exploring their interests, whatever they may be. We especially want to acknowledge the essential roles that educators play in students' text journeys. Through the NCWIT AIC Educator Award, NCWIT both honors and celebrates informal and formal educators who encourage high school women, gender queer, non-binary students in tech. To our AIC educators, we are honored to celebrate you and your contribution to gender equity in computing education, and we truly thank you for all that you do. To our high school recipients, you all should feel extremely proud of your accomplishments. NCWIT received thousands of applications this year, and you represent some of the most promising talent in the country. Be confident in yourself and your goals, and remember that NCWIT is here to support you along your journey. Congratulations once again to all of the awardees and everyone who has encouraged them along the way. And welcome to the Aspirations in Computing community. This is just the beginning. That is great. And we are so honored that we do have one of our NCWIT representatives with us, our regional affiliate manager, Zoe Levitt. She is with us today. Zoe, would you like to say a few words? I'd love to. Hi, everyone. My name is Zoe Levitt. I work as the regional affiliate manager at NCWIT. I'm on the aspirations and computing team. And Honestly, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I my mom is from North Dakota. Um, I've told Charity and Jill I like spent many many summers visiting, um, you know, the Fargo area, and so I was really happy when North and South Dakota became um, one of my affiliates that I um, support. So, uh, you know, there's a couple things that stand out. I, I don't want to be repetitive of the video you just saw. Uh, I was thinking about 
when Dr. Rushi was talking, there's a couple of things that I think are important to sort of uh, comment on. Um, I'm in a household full of baseball players and um, something that, you know, my partner says a lot is, you know, Jackie Robinson always says, you know, life is not a spectator sport. And what I want to pull out from what you've heard today is probably uh, to make those connections, you know, follow through with these offers to find us on LinkedIn. You are welcome to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, I think it's a great platform for your professional um, connections and development. It's a great place to uh, get recognition and connections and um, sort of keep track of all these like layers of people that you meet. Uh, another takeaway from what she was speaking about is really like taking chances. Uh, I think it's a big part of why you're here today. I would I love to hear that we have seniors here that are previous awardees. So one of our goals with NCWIT is absolutely for applicants to move their way through the tiers of awards. So we have five tiers of awards for high schoolers, and then we have a collegiate award and we have an Aspire IT award. Uh, if there's anyone here who doesn't already know this, NC WIT is really like about 20 years old and originally um, started as basically a team of social scientists who said, we're gonna research what happens when women and you know basically like gender oppressed people in technology receive recognition, are welcomed into a community where they feel less like they don't belong. And so everything in NCWIT is research-based. We have a very, very strong team of social scientists who continue this research. And I think uh, we are making strides. Our goal was definitely not to exist in 20 years, to be honest, um, but we're not there. And so these awards are very, very impactful. They're great on your uh, college applications. They're great on your resumes um, because it's a part of your life. Now it might feel like um, it's not that unique, but actually I, I used to work um, at CU Boulder and um, help the admissions team uh, review applications. And that is the first time I ever learned about NCWIT. And I am in Boulder and NCWIT is housed in Boulder. And so just to give you an idea, it is a unique um, recognition that we see, we don't see very often in, uh, you know, admissions and also I think professionally. So make those connections on NCWIT, follow up with people, take chances, um, try to do some internships, micro internships, things like that. And then my last message sort of is, um, you know, stay curious. This field is wide and it wants you uh, to be part of it. And um, I think receiving this award is, um, you know, I think we've received almost 5,000 applications. So it's a big deal and we're here to celebrate you. I also absolutely wanna thank Charity and Jill and Tabitha for like creating this space and prioritizing like this community and um, these award recipients, so. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, like chat me or follow up, email me, find me on LinkedIn um, and keep applying. Move through the tiers, get all the awards. Let's keep celebrating you every year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zoe. And as she said, let's take a look at some of our champions, Jill. OK, so each of the students receiving an affiliate award will receive a medal to recognize their achievements. The Rising Star will receive a bronze medal, the Honorable Mentions will receive a silver medal, and the affiliate winners will receive a gold medal. Each student will also receive a personalized certificate to go with their medal. After the positive response that we got from last year, we again asked our students to do a flip video response to tell us a little bit about who they are and why this award is so special for them. So students recorded their responses and we've added them to our awards presentation today. So we are going to start with our students who are rising stars and receiving a bronze medal. Hi, I'm Anastasia, or just Stacia, sorry. 
I am a junior at Warren High School and I am involved in basketball and track. I am honored to be selected for the Rising Star Award. Your recognition of my efforts is highly appreciated and serves as a significant motivator. This award further inspires me to learn more about computer science and technology. Thank you for watching. Hi. Hi, I'm Abby Cooper and I am a sophomore at Warner High School. I currently participate in basketball and volleyball. I'm honored to have received this award because it means I am acknowledged of my aspirations in computer science. Having earned this award will help motivate me to further my knowledge in computer science in the world of technology. Thank you. Hi. Hi, my name is Brooke Holland. I'm a junior at Warner High School. I play basketball and I run track. This award really means a lot to me because it will help further my knowledge in technology and it will help me get into colleges and more things with my future. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Jordan Jensen and I'm a junior at Warner High School. Thank you for this award. It, I greatly appreciate it and it will help me learn more about technologies in the future for my future career, which I plan to go to SDSU for animal science. So hopefully this will be able to help me learn about all the technologies I'll be using, maybe in a vet facility. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Amelia Johnson and I am a sophomore at Warner High School. I am currently involved in volleyball and band. Some of my hobbies are hanging with my friends and just being outside. This award means a lot to me because I'm being validated and recognized as a woman in computer science. And not only will this award help further my knowledge in the STEM field as of now, but also in my future career's technological needs. So once again, thank you for this award. I deeply appreciate it and thank you for listening to me. Hi, my name is Cameron Liebel. I'm a freshman from Warner High School. I'm currently involved in volleyball and track. This award means to me that I can continue to involve myself in a skill set that I'm interested in. I am very honored to receive this award. This award will help me to continue to use computer technology in my everyday life. Thank you. Hi, my name is Emily Malsom and I am a junior at Warner High School. I'm in volleyball and I participate in 4-H in the rodeos. I appreciate this award and it will help me with my technological knowledge in the future. This award also helps me to learn more about technology and computer science. Thanks again. Hello, my name is Libby Saponiak. I'm a junior at Warner High School where I'm involved in volleyball. I'm very grateful for this award. It will help with my aspiration in computer science and technology by helping me further my knowledge and education. I appreciate being acknowledged for my skills with technology and receiving this award. Thank you for watching my video. Hi, I'm Haven Shore, a freshman from Warner High School. I'm involved in volleyball and track, and this award means to me that I have knowledge in computer science and technology, which is what I'm greatly interested in. I'm so honored to have the Rising Star Award, and this award will help me with my computer science and technology in the future. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carly Worth, and I'm a freshman at Warner High School. I'm involved in volleyball and basketball, and I'm also part of the Monarch Who Care Club. This award means to me is that I will further my knowledge and keep learning about computer science. I'm honored to be receiving the Rising Star Award because it shows I'm getting acknowledged for my aspiration in this field. Thank you for this award and watching my video. Hi, I'm Regan Wood and I am a sophomore from Warner High School. I am involved in volleyball and track. This award means a lot because it shows I am recognized as a woman in technology and STEM. I also plan to go into a field that deals with lots of technology every day. With this award, it encourages me to want to keep learning more about technology. Again, thank you so much for this award and listening to me today. Congratulations to all of our rising stars. And Jill, you noticed how many of our rising stars were also athletes. 
Next up are our students who earned honorable mention, and they are going to be receiving silver medals. Hi, my name is Janessa Sarda, and I'm a freshman from Warner High School. I'm currently involved in basketball. This award means to me that I've been recognized for my ability in computer technology. This award will help with my achievements in computer technology because it will enhance my knowledge of computer technology. Thanks for watching my video. Hello, my name is Jenna Hazors, and I'm a freshman from Warner High School. I'm involved in volleyball, basketball, track, and also Monarchs Who Care. This award means to me that I will continue to expand my knowledge about computer science and technology. I'm honored to receive this award for honorable mention because it shows me being recognized for my interest and aptitude for computing and technology, leadership, and aspirations to pursue technology through my future career. Thank you for this award and listening to my video. Hi, my name is Addison Heinrich and I am a sophomore at Warner High School. I am involved in volleyball, cross country, basketball, track, and band. This award I'm very grateful for because I feel like it really shows how much I enjoy using technology and other things in the STEM field. This award will help me gain scholarships and get into college. Thank you. Hi, my name is McKenna Lightholt and I am a sophomore at Warner High School. I am involved in volleyball, basketball, and track. I am honored to have received this award because it means that I have been recognized for my skills and computer science. This award also shows myself the skills that I have mastered in computer science and technology and will further my learning in the STEM field. Thank you for this award and for watching this video. Hi, I'm Lily Meehan and I'm a freshman at Warner High School. I'm involved in volleyball and track. This award will further motivate me to learn more about computer science in the world of technology. I'm honored to receive the Honorable Mention Award because it means I am being acknowledged for my aspirations in computer science and technology. Thank you for watching my video. Hi, my name is Nora Moen. I am currently a junior at Warner High School. I participate in basketball, track, and trap. I appreciate this award. This award will help me to motivate further education in technology. It also validates my current knowledge in technology. Thanks again. Hi, my name is Ava Nelson and I'm a senior from Warner High School. I'm currently involved in volleyball, basketball, and track. This award recognition means to me that I have been acknowledged for a skill set that I have in computer technology. This award will help me with my aspirations in computer science and technology because it will allow me to further my knowledge in the STEM field. I'm honored to be chosen for this award and I thank you for watching my video. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Robinson. I'm a freshman at Warner High School. I'm involved in volleyball, chorus, and band. This award will allow me to expand my knowledge into the world of technology and the STEM field. I am honored to receive this award because it means I am being acknowledged for my aspirations in the computer science field. Thank you for the honor of receiving this award and thank you for watching my video. Hello, my name is Kylie Shaw. I am a junior at Warner High School. I am currently involved in volleyball, basketball, and track. The recognition for this award means a lot to me and I greatly appreciate being acknowledged for my skill sets. This award will help me further my knowledge in technology and computer science and motivate me to take on new challenges every day. Thank you for listening to my video. Hi, my name is Susie Shug. I'm a junior at Wilson High School. I'm involved in swim, soccer, robotics, and pageants. This award symbolizes recognition for my dedication and hard work in computer science as a girl in STEM. It will help me continue my drive to work harder and it encourages me to share my skills and my passion of computer and technology with other girls. Thank you for this award. Hello, my name is Presley Bullock and I am a freshman at Warner High School. I am involved in volleyball, basketball, track, and the Monarchs Who Care Club. I am honored to be selected for the Honorable Mention Award. What this award means to me is that I will expand my future knowledge in computer science and technology. This award means I am being acknowledged for my aspirations in the computer science field. Thank you for this award and listening to my video. 
Okay, we need to check back in with our bracket to see who will be going to the championship game. Girls Who Code, Gen Cyber, NC Wit, and Robotics are all great opportunities for our students to learn and grow. However, Girls Who Code and NC Wit are coming out on top and will go head to head for our championship. Both have so much to offer for students, all students, in expanding their knowledge. I can't wait to see the outcome of this matchup. And so our for our final group, we are proud to announce that the students, um, these students have been selected as affiliate winners and they will be receiving gold medals. Hi there, I'm Michaela Browning. I'm a senior at Warner High School. I'm involved in oral interp, one act play, band where I play the French horn choir. I'm also in my school's Monarchs Who Care Club, 4-H, and Warner STEM Club. On top of that, I also dance ballet. In my future, I plan to either go to Augustana University or St. Olaf's College. I have yet to make that decision, but what I want to major in is art for the purpose of going into graphic design. Right now, I'm not sure if I want to go into the marketing side of graphic design more or take it towards the web design. With whatever choice that I make, it means a lot to me to have received this award because they recognize my abilities with technology and computing. And that means a lot because I'm going into a career that will involve me working with technology a lot. And to have that recognition really makes me feel good and confident in my skills and puts a good look on my resume. So thank you so much, NC Wit, for all that you've done for me and the other girls that have received this award. Hello, my name is Lauren Brynjolfsson from Red River High School in Grand Forks, North Dakota. I am a junior. I am so honored to have received this award from NCWIT and I'm grateful to have been recognized as a woman in technology. It really helps further other women in our area and I am looking forward to more opportunities in technology and just furthering my knowledge of technology. Hello, my name is Vanessa Enns and I'm a junior at Harrisburg High School. Uh, I am thankful for this opportunity to meet like-minded individuals who are also interested in the tech field. Um, I have learned more about technology through online resources, through classes, and also through my jobs. I worked as a code sensei at Code Ninjas where I would help kids learn how to code their own games. And I currently work at Best Buy as a Geek Squad agent. My plans for the future are to go to Dakota State University for a double major in cyber operations and network and security administration, as well as for a master's in cyber defense. Thank you for recognizing me for this award. Hi, my name is Brooklyn Helvine and I'm a senior at T area high school. I'm honored to receive this award because I worked really hard to get where I am today. I hope to continue pursuing computer science to learn more throughout the years. Hi, my name is Reese Hammerquist and I'm a junior at Tierra High School. I'm involved in soccer, basketball, track, FCCLA, NHS, Salsa, and Cyber Patriot. This award means a lot to me because it shows me that I have the potential to succeed in a technology related field. This award will help grow my resume and open up future opportunities. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Morgan Hayeshorst and I'm a senior at Warner High School. I'm involved in basketball and track. This award means to me that is acknowledgement of my achievements in the field that I'm passionate about. This award, will all, this award will also help my aspirations in computer science technology since it validates my skills and dedication, which motivates me to pursue even more in this field. Thank you for this award and listening to my video. Yeah. Hi, my name is Remington Jacobson and I'm a junior at T area. I'm involved in FCCLA, FFA, FBLA, Trium, Band, NHS, Salsa, Cyber Patriot, and the American Legion Auxiliary. This award means a lot to me because it shows that I can do well in the technology field. This will help grow my resume and open up future opportunities. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anna Schwab and I'm a junior at Warner High School. I play basketball and I work at a dog boarding facility. Uh, this award will help me learn more about technology in the future and further my career goals 
and helped me learn about vet instruments and how vet te technology works. I'm grateful to be receiving this award and I'm honored to be an affiliate winner. Uh, thank you for this honor and thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Selena from Red River High School and um, I'm really grateful for this award recognizing women in STEM since through my involvement with robotics and ICTE classes, I've seen that women are still a minority and I hope to keep using computing to do cool stuff in the medical field when I grow up and this award, um, it gives me faith in my abilities. Thanks for listening. Congratulations to all of our winners. Your medals were mailed to you or to your teacher and you should have received them. So if you have them near you and you are joining us live today, we would love to have you turn your cameras on and share your medals with us and show them off so that we can celebrate you even more. So if you are able to, feel free to do that and we would love to just give you another round of applause. Congratulations. If you have not received your medals and your certificates yet, please make sure that you check with your teachers or contact um, Jill or I directly and we will make sure that we get those to you and figure out where they got sent to because they you should be in your possession. In addition to recognizing our students today, we are also recognizing our Affiliate Educator Award winner. Our educators work with students year round to help them improve their technology skills and encourage them to discover opportunities for their futures. We are recognizing Bobby Duter today for her continued support for her students in technology. Hello everyone. My name is Bobby Duter. I teach high school science and computer science here at Warner High School in Warner, South Dakota. I'm very lucky to be this North and South Dakota Affiliate Teacher Awardee winner. I am so happy that I have so many young women within my school district that were able to receive this award. It means that we're inspiring a new generation of young people to go into the field of computer science. Even if you're using computer science in fields like veterinary science, and medicine. We need people who are able to code and program and to work within other industries, not just in cybersecurity, but go through a gamut of industries. I am so proud of the young women that have received this award. I hope that we keep pushing you guys to do better, to become more, and follow your dreams into the next generation. Congratulations, everyone. I am so very proud of you. Thank you, Bobby. And we wanted to come back around and highlight one of our award winners today. She was also selected as a national honorable mention winner, Vanessa Entz. And so Vanessa's with us. She does have her camera. On. Vanessa, do you want to say a few words? Sure. I just wanted to thank everyone for um, uh, giving me this award. Um, I just, I'm really thankful to join uh, in the AIC community. So thank you. Yes, we are so glad that you are able to join us today. And it's an amazing accomplishment to be recognized in your regional affiliate, but also to be recognized nationally. And we wanted to just give you an extra shout out for that award. So congratulations again, Vanessa. We had a handful of winners that were not able to share a message with us today, but we wanted to make we wanted to identify them and their award levels with Rising Star, Reagan Hermanson, Roosevelt High School. Honorable mention, Alyssa McDaniel, T Area High School. And for winners, April Crafton, Williston High School, Caitlin Crump, Lisbon High School, and Briley Zhang, Red River High School. Congratulations to them. We hope to see everyone continue to apply for the Aspirations and Computing Awards again next year. If you are a senior, you can also apply for the Collegiate Level Awards. Today, we started our March Madness with our Sweet 16 programs, tools, and opportunities for our students in North and South Dakota. We want to bring those up again to share awareness. If you have any questions about any of these opportunities, reach out to your fellow awardees as they have taken part in these great resources. You also have been added to the Aspirations in Computing community by being an affiliate award recipient. Use this community to find other activities, clubs, and opportunities, just like Dr. Rucci had mentioned, that will allow you to continue your growth. 
make sure that you update your profile and connect with others in all of these communities and any others that you find on your own resources. Okay, drum roll, please. Oh, that didn't work. And the winner, the 2024 champion of our NC, NC Wit March Madness is NC Wit. Yay! <laughs> Again, we are proud of our Sweet 16 this year, and all those that didn't make it into this year's tournament continue to find more technology opportunities and share them amongst your networking connections. We thank you for joining us for today's March Madness event. NC Wit would appreciate your feedback through the survey link to provide us with ways to improve future award ceremonies. So we'll leave this up for a few moments so you can scan it um, and and uh, share your your thoughts. Um, yes, please, everyone on the awards call right now if you wouldn't mind scanning that QR code. It does help Jill and I and our committee to improve these award ceremonies each year, but also to help NCWIT with their vision as well. If you haven't had a chance to finish, we do encourage you to continue to work on this after the, the, the award ceremony is finished. If you are interested in seeing this award ceremony again, and for those that may have had troubles hearing some of the sound, we apologize for that technical difficulty, but you will be able to find this also on our Edutex YouTube channel. It will be posted there. So this QR code will get you access to our YouTube channel. And as soon as we have this all edited, which it's fabulous, you all are fabulous, um, and we get it posted, you guys will be able to watch it again at your convenience, and please share it out with your family members. If they weren't able to join us or your friends, colleagues, anybody else, future employers, universities, go ahead and put it on your resumes, take a look at it. In closing, we would like to recognize the NCWIT Aspirations in Computing sponsors. Without these sponsors, we wouldn't be able to celebrate all of you. Remember to continue to connect with this community because you belong. You are part of a national network of peers supported by professionals and volunteers who want to see you succeed in the field of computing and technology. Exchange ideas and advice with others. Gain exclusive access to scholarships, internships, and more, and lead computing experiences that inspire the next generation within this community. So go out and continue to inspire to do great things and encourage others and self-nominate for next year's aspirations in computing. We want to thank Dr. Bardwaj for her great message, for Zoe for joining us today and sharing all of their stories. And to all of you winners, one more time, thank you for joining us this afternoon. And we look forward to seeing you guys again next year. Thank you.